now, you can begin wiring. Remove the dustproof plugs from all module BMS and power ports. Attach the included cable ties to the modules. You'll need to do this before continuing the installation. Route the positive DC power cables through the cable ties and insert the cables into the module's positive power ports. Route the negative DC power cables through the cable ties and insert the cables into the module's negative power ports. Route the RJ45 signal cables through the cable ties. Loosen the locking caps, insert the cables into the BMS ports, and finally rotate the locking caps to secure them. Route the ground cables through the cable ties. Secure the cables with screws. Just a reminder, the PE and RJ45 cables are secured with the same cable tie. Each DC power cable has its own cable tie. Cut off any cable tie excess. Repeat these steps to wire each module. Insert an ERJ45 connector with the 120 ohm terminating resistors through the bottom of the battery. Connect with the BMS port. Next, cover the negative DC power port with a female cap and cover the positive DC power port with a male cap. You're ready to connect the power module to the backup controller. You'll need an L1 cable, L2 cable, neutral cable, ground cable, and a signal cable. Make sure the signal cable is the appropriate length. First, remove the wiring compartment cover from the right side of the power module. Rotate the inner rings to remove the stoppers from the compartment cover. Attach conduit fittings to the compartment cover's inlets. Take a moment to prepare the AC power cables. Strip 18 millimeters of insulation. Connect the ground, neutral, L1 and L2 cables to the power module. Connect the signal cable to the PCSCOM1 port. Put the compartment cover back on. Place a breaker on the rail labeled Power Module 1 and secure the breaker with screws. Note that your breaker location may differ depending on your location and needs. Connect the L1 and L2 cables to the breaker for Power Module 1. Install the neutral and ground cables to their respective wiring bars. Plug the ERJ45 connector into the COMPCS port in the wiring compartment. EV wirings. Backup loads wiring. Non-backup loads wiring. Generator wirings, optional. Put a generator breaker on the rail labeled generator and then secure the breaker using AM3 screw. Land the NNPE cables on the neutral bar and ground bar respectively. Connect the L1 and L2 cables to the L1 and L2 poles of the generator breaker. Orient the current transformers with the arrows pointing towards the generator. Plug the terminal block connector into the terminal block socket labeled Gene CT. Plug the signal block connector into the terminal block socket labeled the Gene IO. If you want to make other communication wiring for the backup controller, you need to insert the signal cables into an appropriate terminal block connector and plug it into the terminal block socket. Install the neutral ground bonding jumper to the backup controller. Make sure to remove the jumper from the panel downstream. Mount a main breaker onto the backup controller. Secure the main breaker with one M4 screw and two hex nuts. Connect the L1, L2, neutral, and ground cables respectively. Make sure the ground cable is connected to a ground anchor. And then, mount the wire sleeve terminals on the ends of the CT's cables and install the terminal block. Orient the arrow on the current transformers toward the cable entry. Plug the terminal block connector into the socket labeled Grid CT. If your backup controller isn't your main service entrance, the main breaker is inside of the main panel. We need connect the backup controller to the main panel first, 
and then go through the power meter to the grid. Connect the L1, L2, neutral, and ground cables respectively. In this instance, the ground cable doesn't require a ground neutral bonding strap. Now, it's time for you to connect your system to the internet. You can connect via Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or a mobile dongle. If you'd like to use 4G data, you can purchase a mobile dongle to do so. To plug in the mobile dongle, take off the backup controller cover and look for a port on top. Remove the breaker plates as needed and reinstall the inner panel to the backup controller. Use the seven included black screws to secure it. Reinstall the backup controller door. Install the battery side covers, starting with the bottom and moving up. Align the side cover clips with the grooves at the bottom of the battery. Push the side covers down to click into place. Install the side covers to the power module. Align the side cover clips with the power module groves. Push the covers down to click into place. Fasten the black M4 10mm screws on top. Attach the rubber separator to the right side cover slot. Finally, take off the screen protection film. Your installation of Anchor Solex X1 is now complete. Anchor Solex. Live in power.